you are provided to judges who are they to muslims and to hindus people wanted to recognize themselves they wanted to create an identity they wanted to become history but there was no time to check them no time to inspect he couldn't even see didn't even say it afraid as he told his club club his people or maybe the community hello hi namaste and welcome to vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence i am nandakishore faculty of english in vidyashram mysore in my previous session i had discussed the first part of the poem partition which is prescribed to first semester bcom and bba mysore university students and in today's session i am going to talk about uh, the continuation of the poem partition written by w h orden so as you know we already have spoken about the poet and his life and what are the contents or the things which will engage in his poem let us see the continuation of the poem partition let me just give you a small recap remember Cyril Ratcliffe had come down to India for the first time in the month of July and he had just 5 or 6 weeks to draw the line the border line between two nations and what will he do how will he do that was discussed already that he was briefed in London itself that he is going to go to India to draw the line between India and Pakistan and that is the heated situation the tensed situation for Cyril Ratcliffe where he receives a lot of words and suggestions from the last viceroy mount batten and he asks not to be seen along with him which would put him in danger further danger he is already in danger now and remember he is also briefed and he is also instructed that you are provided to judges who are they to muslims and two hindus these are the four judges right two from either side four judges remember he was told that he will be provided four judges two from muslims and two from hindus so two muslims and two hindus and you are going to discuss with them but you are not going to tell them the final outcome the result you are not going to declare the result let's see what is the next line suggesting to the reader here not just that don't just declare keep it as a secret and shut up in a lonely mansion w h orden writes these are the two words shut up yourself shut up lock yourself in the lonely mansion not amongst the crowd because people might kill you you favor either of the communities then you are dead by the other community lonely mansion with police night and day even when you are at home or the house or a mansion it doesn't matter whether it's night it doesn't matter whether it's day you will be shut yourself you are going to shut yourself lock up yourself in a mansion you are not going to come out straight away he came from london to india he ent he entered the mansion locked himself in a room and there are police night and day to patrol patrolling the gardens to keep assassins away he says patrolling watching over they are going to just march back and forth they are go just going to go around the house or a mansion they are just going to watch over you make sure that nobody is going to enter and those people who enter your mansion would be assassins the moment they get to know that these are the states these are the places they have lost and these are the places they have gained either of the parties would kill you let that not happen so this is what is being told the previous lines 
Those were the expressions by Auden and those were the words told to Cyril Ratcliffe. Now, what he does, how he does, let us see that. He got down to work. What is the work here? To look at the census, to look at the map, which were outdated. Both of them were outdated, tampered, manipulated, incorrect data. He got down to work to the task of settling the fate. Say it's beautifully written, settling the fate. Whose fate? Of millions. Of millions, it could be both Muslims and Hindus. What is the fate? The fate is such that millions of Muslims who migrated to Pakistan, they owned a piece of land in India. They lost it. Millions of people who are a part of Punjab, they belong to Pakistan now. Then Punjab, then Lahore is a part of Pakistan. But Lahore was a part of India then. It was a part of Punjab. But the Lahore, it belongs to Pakistan. There are millions of people. There are lakhs of Hindus even today. The lakhs of Sikhs, Sikh people, Sikh community people. I'm not talking about S-I-C-K. I'm talking about S-I-K-H, Sikh people. Sikh, Singh, divided, broken into million pieces. The thought process was shattered. Settling the fate of millions, the maps at his disposal were out of date. The maps. I just want to know, I wonder who gave him the data. Why was the data, the outdated data given to him? Who gave it? What were the intentions behind it? Just think, this is just a role model poem to the to the present generation, people who are fighting for their religion, who claim that their religion is supreme and no other religion is not. It is not supreme. Only their religion is supreme. It could be any religious people for that matter. You fools, you know this. There were a lot of hidden hands. And the future was not foreseen. The maps at his disposal. Who gave him the maps? Why did they give him? What was the intention? Was it purposefully done? Or was it not? God alone knows. And even if we know, what is that we could do now? It has turned from bad to worst. Not worse, from bad to worst. Bad is such that the divided. Before they could leave our country, they divided us and left. But before then, we Indians, we Hindus and Muslims were brothers. Now we have turned enemies. Who made this? It is them. I don't blame any politician. I don't blame any religious leaders today. I blame Britishers. Did, did they just do it to India? No, they have done it to a lot of countries. All the colonial countries, they have lost their aboriginal ideas, their aboriginal identity. It is such a pathetic feeling. We have lost our identity as human being. We are fighting like animals. We are fighting like uncivilized people. Aren't we all? That is the message which is conveyed from this poem. Think about it. Should we fight for the sake of a concept which doesn't exist at all? God alone knows. And he says it is outdated. And the census returns almost certainly incorrect. Certainly, he says certainly. The census returns incorrect. What is that census? The census would be about what is the percentage of Muslims? What is the percentage of Hindus who want to stay here and who, and who wants to leave the country? And what is the amount of people? What is the percentage of people who are claiming for a new nation, new country? 
it was more it is believed it is more than 25 percent of muslims or let us say more than 25 percent of the population then population was muslims 25 percentage and they wanted a new nation they wanted to claim their rights there are a lot of political agendas as well behind this poem and during the time of partition there were a lot of political agendas there was a lot of jealousy there were a lot of selfishness people wanted to recognize themselves they wanted to create an identity they wanted to become history the crookedness of this human mankind led to this partition everything is gone dead and gone incorrect data and then Auden writes, but there was no time to check them. Think about it. It's just that you have given somebody 5 crore rupees and they give you back the money. It is a time where you don't have time to count the money and you just take it and you end up losing a crore. What is your feeling? It is more, maybe, and I'm telling you, it is 10,000 times multiplied. What you face losing 1 crore rupees. 10,000 times multiplied. But there was no time to check them. No time to inspect. He couldn't even see, didn't even see it. It's just that two people on his one side told, yes, this is what we are going to claim. And two people on the other side told, yes, this is what we want. And draw a line, just go on drawing a line and let our people die, let our people keep, kill each other. What does it matter? We are going to just rectify or just going to identify ourselves that we are the ones who helped Cyril Ratcliffe in partitioning, in, in, in dividing, in bifurcating the country and the people. Contested areas, no time to inspect the contested areas. Pakistanis wanted this, Indians wanted that. Today it's going on. Back then it was Hindus wanted this and Muslims wanted that. The weather was frightfully hot. He says the weather. What weather is he talking about? Is he talking about the actual weather? The hot, humid condition? No. The weather is talking about its about the feelings, the pulse of the people, the mindset, the heated weather was frightfully hot. That is actually one situation. The other situation would be actual weather. It, you can interpret in both the way. One is frightfully hot as people mindset or the weather or the actual weather, the weather is so hot here. In England, it, it is not the case, it is not so hot. It is not so humid in England, it's cold. Remember, this has got a greater impact because depending on the weather situation, people would act, people would think. So be careful while interpreting the lines here. You can interpret in both the way, both the way it's correct. And next he says, and a bout of decentry kept him constantly on the trot. The bout, it is a feeling of, of decent where he is just experiencing his stomach upset. Remember, when you, when you lose your appetite, when your stomach is upset, what is the sort of a feeling you get? You are severely in pain. You can neither pass your motion, neither hold it. It's like it squeezes your belly. The feeling which affects. Remember, these words are very important. Why? Because rem, just think about it. You are upset. Your health is upset, especially with diarrhea, dysentery. And you have exams or you have to complete your assignment. Let us say, let me just put it in your terms. Let me just limit ourselves to the classroom situation. You have dysentery and you are in the college or maybe in your room and you have an assignment which you have to fulfill, which you have to write, which you have to complete within a day. 
and your belly is upset, would you just think a lot about your assignment or think a lot about your health? Of course, you would think about your health. So in a hurry, hurry, in a hurry, you will just scribble something and you give off the assignment. The same situation is faced by Cyril Ratcliffe here. The moment he takes down the data, the maps and the senses which are outdated, he has the problem with his health, which leads him to just randomly go on drawing. Who knows? That might be the case. Never knows, never testified, never judged, never questioned. Because it was drawn by one of the Britishers. And he says it kept, it kept him constantly on the trot. Trot is like, you know, a walking or running randomly. And it says, but in seven weeks it was done. So these two lines were very important with respect to drawing a line. But in seven weeks it was done. Just in seven weeks. Without looking at the data. Without looking at anything. Without inspecting. Nothing. Just in seven weeks. How many days? How many weeks? Seven weeks. The frontiers decided. The frontiers, it was decided and divided. And the continent, for better or worse, was divided. The continent, he says, the two countries. No, it is the continent. Look at it, the use of the words. The continent. Auden is not calling this country a country. He's not calling a country as a country. No. He's calling it as a continent. That's how powerful we were. For what? For better or for worse? Divided. Done and dusted. His job is done. However, he wanted, he, he did it. What happens next? The next day, immediately, soon after he drew, packed it in envelope, gave it, gave it to whomsoever it concerned. And immediately the next day, the next day he sailed for England. He went back to his place, the native, where he quickly forgot. Look at the words which are used Quickly forgot. Why is W.H. Auden taunting the British supremacy here? Because when a person commits a crime or when person commits a mistake or when person commits a blunder, he would regret if the normal human being who has a soul and a heart and a mind or with a common sense would definitely think about it. We will regret. Yes, I did wrong. What I did was a blunder. What I did was a mistake, a horrible mistake, which could not be or which cannot be changed ever again. It cannot be changed forever. And he says, quickly for God, as if nothing he had done, he just drew a line on the map. He is not bothered the, about the feelings of this two community, about the people, about the laws of lives where each other started killing is not bothered at all. And then the case, he forgot, where he quickly forgot, the case, he says the case, what did he forget? The case, what was the case here? The case was to draw a line. Where he quickly forgot the case as a good lawyer must. Remember, this is very important. Lawyers, they always fight a case. They get to fight a lot of case on their daily basis. They are not bothered about winning or losing. They are bothered about making money. I'm not saying this. I'm not against any lawyer in particular here. I'm not saying that lawyers are bad, but that is what happens. Of course, they are talking about, of course, they think about winning. But 
all they do is once they take up the case whether you are a culprit whether you are a criminal whether you are a good person that doesn't matter to them all they want is the case the money their prestige of winning that's why he claims good lawyer sarcastically saying good lawyer must what do the good lawyer do here what do the good lawyers do they forget they fight they forget and he says, very quickly forgot the case. It is just a case. It is not, this word is very important. I'm telling you, it is not about, the way Jordan says, I'm not saying this. It is not about people. It is not about their feelings. It is not about their land. It is not about their heritage. It's not about their culture. It's not about their lives, their emotions, whatever it might be. No. The case, he compares this to a case. And he says, good lawyer must forget. He will forget, definitely. And so should he. And he forgot. He quickly forgot. Return he would not. He says, Auden says, return he would not. Who? Cyril. Cyril Ratcliffe, he would not come back. Afraid. Why? A coward. Afraid of life. Afraid as he told his club, club, his people, or maybe the community, or maybe the supreme power of England who sent him to India. As he told his club that he might get shot. One day you come here, the moment he divided this land, the land of heaven, right, heavenly land, and went back to England, he knew the moment he steps his foot on this land, he would be shot dead. That is the sort of a feeling he had. And that is how W.H. Auden, being an Anglo-American, Anglo-American, Britain, he knew about it and he feels sorry. He's just bringing out the picture, he's picturizing the tensed, the heated situation during the partition time and how well they used their brains. So-called, the brilliant people, the most educated, the posh, the sons of gods, what did they do? They divided without any base and they left the country to fight between each other. So that is how W.H. Auden brings his feelings. Possibly he may not be sorry here, but he's just picturizing the live incident. He's trying, he has made an attempt to bring back the history to the present readers. Or maybe he would just trying to pass this message to the next generation readers and maybe he wants to claim that one should know about history. One should know what he was and what was his struggle as a man or maybe the freedom struggle that our ancestors fought or went through. It could be any sacrifice. It could be for that matter. I know few have sacrificed Plenty have sacrificed their lives and few have gained something out of it. The king makers, let us keep it aside. But here W.H. Auden says that we should be aware of what we have come through. And he maybe he is just mocking at the British supremacy. So that is about uh, this poem. And let us see the previous year's questions now. What does the poem partition mainly deal with? It deals with the partition between India and Pakistan during the time of independence, right? Who was Radcliffe? He was so London lawyer or he would you would just write uh, the best answer would be the person who drew the line the border line between India and Pakistan. What was his mission to draw the line? Right to draw the border to divide the people based on the religion. His mission was to draw the line between India and Pakistan. This 
will be asked for one mark. This was asked for one mark each and this was asked for five marks annotation. Next day, he sailed for England where he could quickly forget the case as a good lawyer must. I've just spoken about it. You can write and you should know that first you have to write about this line where uh, the poet talks about the situation and this line is taken from the poem Partition authored and penned by W.H. Auden and you should talk about the context while expressing your answers, while writing your answers. This is for 10 mark, 10 mark or question. Partition is a criticism on partition of India, criticizing, that is what I told you, he's mocking get, criticizing on the partition of India, discuss, of course, yes, indeed, 100%. It is criticizing, criticizing the supremacy, the British supremacy by W.H. Auden. How do you write it? You have to write at least three paragraphs minimum. First, you have to write about the poet W.H. Auden and then you write about the poem, background of the poem. What was the situation? What does the poem deal about? And then you go on criticizing how I spoke about giving a lot of examples. You can write the same way, but without giving the examples, comparison, the, par the parallel example or the present situations. Don't give the context and contrast situations to present lives, but you can just go on writing the history, how they were divided. And I spoke about history as well. You can mention it. It will carry definitely a couple or three marks for sure. I have spoken about World War II. I have spoken about a Muslim League. I have spoken about how the Muslims and Hindus were divided and what were the consequences. You can also write about a few lines, in few lines, about what are the consequences or after effect of partition. You can also mention about Kushwan Singh where he writes his, pens down his, his his own writings as uh, the train to Pakistan, very important novel. You can also bring in that reference in this 10 marks question. That is how you get 10 marks. It's not so easy to get 10 marks just by writing the summary of the poem. Remember that the more you write the summary, the lesser marks you get. They are not asking you to write the summary. It is about criticism, critically analyze it. Maybe you have to express it. How well you do it, it's in your hands. You can always dig or take more notes, dig for more notes on the internet. You can surf, you can just lay on some other materials. It could be handouts or it could be some other novels. Read it, bring in to the parallel comparison with this poem or it could be for that matter other poems as well. So keep doing it. Definitely you can score more marks in your semester examination which is very important in your lives so that is about today's session i am going to meet you in my next session with new topic with new poem until then keep reading have a good day take care